We're halfway through our hair or textbook, having learned about the story of journalism, how newsrooms work, news writing basics, reporting basics, and covering the news. This week, in Chapter 6, we go beyond breaking news. We'll start by delving into the wonderful world of features, generating story ideas, and feature style. We'll talk about writing profiles, investigative reporting, and package planning. And finish up our lecture on Beyond Breaking News with short-form alternatives to boring gray text, and then learn how to write editorials, columns, and reviews. Features personalize the news with stories that educate and entertain. As we've learned, news stories focus mainly on timely public events, things like a city council or school board meeting, on elections, fires, etc. Features, however, are more personal. I like to think of things as news that you need to know, and features as things you read and say, huh, that's interesting. It doesn't mean a feature isn't as important as a news story. It just means that it serves a different purpose. Now, features can explore a variety of topics like lifestyles, health, science and technology, entertainment, food, or homes and gardens. Features include topics, treatments, and styles not traditionally found in news. some popular types of feature stories. The first is the personality profile. This is a feature story that combines quotes, facts, and descriptions to help reveal a subject's personality. Now, a personality profile can cover famous people, people, or just regular folk. There's also the human interest story. This is a story about ordinary people that is tragic, funny, odd, or inspirational. Then you have a color story. In this case, color refers to the flavor or mood, like a color commentator in a sports broadcast. That's the person that works alongside the play-by-play -play announcer. A color story is one in which the writer describes the flavor or mood of the event, such as a parade, a funeral, or a disaster. Next, you have what's called the backgrounder. It's also called the analysis piece. It's a story that uses research and interviews to help explain how an issue or an event in the news happened, why it matters, as well as what happened next. Then you have the trend story. This is a story that keeps readers aware of the people, places, things, and ideas affecting today's culture. What is everyone wearing, eating, or watching now? Now we move on to the reaction piece. This is a story that provides a sampling of opinions from experts victims, or ordinary people about a dramatic issue confronting the community. This is a way to localize a national story, asking local people how something happening somewhere else or everywhere impacts them. Then you have flashback. This is a story published usually on the anniversary of a historic event. It combines facts, photos, and interviews to explain why the event is important. Think of it as an anniversary story. Then there's the how-to. This is an interactive feature story that teaches readers how to do something. It can be how to bake a cake from scratch, how to reduce debt, how to apply for a mortgage, or how to barbecue a pig. Next is your consumer guide. A feature story that rates products or services for readers. Now when my dryer broke, I needed to buy a new one quickly, so I use consumer guide stories, as well as online reviews, to help inform my purchase. Then you have the personal narrative. This is a feature story, often written in first person, that tells a gripping tale to recreate drama. Now, Harrower notes that editors usually discourage stories written in the first person, and this editor, meaning me as your instructor, is outlawing them in this class. While they certainly have a purpose, my goal is to teach you how to write about other people. Then you can learn how to write about yourself. Now you may have heard me mention news in terms of hard or soft. 
These are relative terms that describe the topic as well as the treatment of a story. Hard news consists of serious, timely news events. You should expect a story about a hospital nursery where babies appear to be born healthy and then mysteriously die to be written in a newsy inverted pyramid style. Then you have soft news. This consists of lighter, less urgent, and less somber topics. Now, if your story was about how to prepare a home nursery for the arrival of your new baby, that would take a softer approach and might be organized chronologically or by topic instead. Now, just like with hard news, soft news can take any number of angles. Now, speaking of that nursery story, babycenter.co.uk has loads of different articles under that preparing your baby's nursery heading. Nurseries on a budget, nursery safety, lighting your nursery, nursery accessories, and a photo story on how to give your nursery a Paradise Island theme. Again, lots of ideas, still covering the same topic, how to prepare your baby's nursery. Great stories are everywhere. They're just waiting to be discovered. To find a great feature story, try looking in the publication's archives. What's been done before? And can you retell the story in a fresh, new way? Look at your competitors. What are they doing? Can you tell the same story differently? Watch TV, listen to the radio, and read magazines and newspapers and websites. Seek out national trends that you can localize for your readers. Again, don't just copy an idea, but make it your own. Read through the mountains of news releases that you get for something interesting. Be open to reader suggestions and brainstorm your call with your colleagues and your friends. And don't forget to just look around and observe your surroundings. Notice a lot of bicycles on campus, like this technician assistant features editor reporter did. Then how about writing a feature with tips on maintaining a bike on campus, like this one here. Now that you have a feature story idea, how do you know if it's a good one? Well, where did it come from? Now, if you notice an increase in bicycle thefts on campus, a feature on the best bike locks to buy, that'll be a stronger idea than something that just popped into your head. Is your idea original? Now, I know I just told you to look at what others are writing and write a version of it yourself. Is the version you want to write different enough? Don't tell the exact same story from the exact same angle. Someone's already read it. They don't want to read it again. Did the story surprise you? Did you learn something new and interesting in your reporting? If you didn't, then your readers probably won't be interested either. Does the idea have movement? Does it change? Does it have motion? Does it have direction? Something that's new and people are starting to talk about. Is there even a story there? Is it something you can do actual reporting on and write a story with a beginning, middle, and end? Is there tension? Harrower defines conflict as reading the first part of the story and not knowing what the last paragraph is gonna stay. Is it true? Or is it an urban legend? And do you like the story? If not, why bother? So your story idea is solid. Let's turn it into a story. Now, if you were paying attention, you've already made sure your idea isn't the exact same as someone else's. Now you have to focus your idea. Be specific in what it is that you want to cover. Talk to your editor early and often. Look at this review of the video game Gears of War 3, published in the NC State Technician. The designer, who won a Gold Circle Award from the Columbia Scholastic Press Association, didn't just throw some graphics on a page a few hours before deadline. Collaborate with your editor photographer and designer, so they can help make your story visually appealing. News writers don't often have this luxury, so feature writers should take advantage of the extra time they have 
to plan stories and make them look great. Do your research. Harrow reminds us that feature stories require the same degree of accuracy, fairness, and attention to detail as any news story does. Then you want to plan your package to tell the story in the best way possible. And finally, get to writing and then rewriting and then maybe rewriting a little, little bit more. Some feature stories require a livelier, looser, and more literary, literary voice. It's what reporter Tom Wolfe called new journalism. That's Tom Wolfe there in his white suit on a 2006 episode of The Simpsons TV show. This new brand of journalism borrowed four literary techniques from novelists. First, you need realistic dialogue, using conversational speech rather than quotations or statements. You want to vividly reconstruct a scene. Tell the story using scenes rather than a historical narrative as much as possible. You want to view your story through the eyes of the characters. This gives us a point of view that helps better understand the events that the characters witnessed. Recording everyday details, such as behavior, possessions, friends, and family, these indicate the status of life as a character. Now, despite using these literary elements, new journalism is not fiction. It has the same standards of factual accuracy as a traditional news piece. To get inside the head of the character, the journalist asks the subjects what they were thinking or how they were feeling, and then recreate the scenes using what was said during the interview. Successful feature writers rely on literary techniques. This is where you'll start to notice the difference between news and feature writing. Feature stories have looser syntax and phrasing. You can use slang and contractions, pause for a dramatic effect, or even write in sentence fragments. You still want to make sure everything is spelled correctly and in proper AP style, though, so don't think you're getting off that easy. News stories are usually written in the past tense, noting that something already happened. Feature stories, however, are written in the present tense to help give readers the feeling that they're actually present watching a story unfold. Feature stories can use dramatic techniques and intense realism. Just like with feature obituaries, they sometimes skip attribution to make the story flow better. But that also means the reporter has to be extra sure that every detail is true. Don't ever say that someone is thinking or feeling a certain way if the person hasn't specifically told you so. Finally, feature stories are filled with more detail and descriptions than news stories. They help capture the moment, not just tell facts. 